Okay, here is uh, our uh, one-layer energy balance model. Um, right now it's set for the default settings of the various feedback factors. Um, the uh, cloud feedback factor is set at a mo modestly uh, negative uh, value of minus 0.83. The water vapor feedback factor is 2, and the ice albedo feedback factor is 0.5. So these two, the water vapor feedback and the ice uh, albedo feedback, are set at positive values. The cloud radiative feedback is uh, set at a negative value, and these values are roughly uh, equal to uh, the best current estimates of what those feedback factors are. And so using those uh, default settings gives us sort of a mid-range uh, climate sensitivity, um, and you'll uh, look at that in your problem set. Um, so you can calculate the climate sensitivity, of course, by varying the CO2, and the CO2 can be varied with this uh, lever here, uh, pre-industrial levels, 280 parts per million, obviously 560 ppm is twice pre-industrial. Uh, if you like, you can even set values outside these ranges by going to the box down below. For example, I could set the CO2 level at 700 ppm, and we can see uh, the initial temperature, surface temperature, 288K uh, for the standard uh, default settings. Um, the uh, new surface temperature, 292, that was a 4.1 degree warming of the surface. Uh, the atmosphere itself, the mid-troposphere, uh, warmed somewhat less, 3.4K. Um, we can see what the long wave and the short wave forcings are. Um, so these are uh, estimates of the radiative forcing uh, due to uh, the combination of the direct influence of changing the CO2 levels plus the uh, various feedbacks, um, the water vapor feedback uh, increasing the greenhouse gas concentration, giving us long wave forcing um, uh, that adds to the long wave forcing from the increase in CO2 alone, uh, the ice albedo feedback um, playing into the short wave forcing. Um, the cloud radiative feedback can influence both a combination of uh, short wave and long wave forcing. Um, uh, there's the cloud albedo effect, which tends to be a negative feedback, but there's also the greenhouse uh, gas-like uh, properties of clouds, the uh, infrared absorbing properties of clouds, which gives us a positive feedback. And as we vary this feedback factor, we can transition from where the negative cloud radiative feedbacks dominate to where the positive uh, cloud feedbacks dominate. Um, we can see how the albedo uh, changes um, as we uh, vary uh, the short wave uh, feedbacks. We can see how the atmospheric emissivity changes. For example, as we change the CO2 level, the default uh, emissivity um, in this model being uh, 0.77, uh, the value that gives us a surface temperature about 288K, the current best estimate of Earth's surface temperature. Uh, finally, if we like, we can vary the solar constant. Uh, we can vary uh, the initial albedo, Earth's planetary albedo, uh, which will, of course, be modified as we change uh, some of the feedback factors. So that's how it works. Um, you're going to explore this model further in your problem set.